what do you desire? What do you groan for? What is your deep down inside desire? Let's go back to Romans chapter 8. What is your desire? What do you really want in life? What is your goal in life? What satisfies you? Romans chapter 8. What is it that you deeply, deeply desire? Notice what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8. And we'll look at verse 18. It says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Notice verse 23. Paul says, Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we are saved in this hope. Notice that, for we are saved in this hope, But hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly, listen, we eagerly, notice that word, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. What do we desire? What do we groan for? I mean, what's our motivation? When you look at this text, The apostle said, he said, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. So the apostles grown within themselves, deep down inside, they had a strong desire. They felt the desire, the groaning, the moaning. They wanted to go to heaven. And with that motivation, that motivation influenced them to do things, the things that they had to do to make it to heaven. But it's a deep down desire. It's a groaning. Understand it. It's a groaning when you desire something. Like if you, if you find yourself extremely hungry and you groan for food. I mean, and and the food is not there, but you, you just, you gotta have it. You're groaning. See, there's a desire that I have to eat something. I need to eat. And so what do you do? You face yourself. You head yourself in that direction to get something to eat. It's that desire within that these men had, these people had. And that's what he's talking about. But notice, and he says in verse 18, he says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Because of that desire, the suffering, the things that they went through, he said it's not even, it doesn't even compare to the things that's going to be revealed. There's no comparison. But how do they do that? Because they had to understand what I'm trying to say here. It's a strong desire, not just a desire. It's like you seek ye first the kingdom of God and all things. I mean, you have that desire. There's no, nothing matters to you. All I want to do is go to heaven. All I want to do is serve Jesus Christ. That's all I want. That is my goal in life. That is my desire. The church in my life is first. That's a strong desire. That's why when I started off, I asked, what is your desire? What do you groan for? Because if you're groaning for things that you should not groan for, you're going to head in that direction. Some people groan for riches. And what they do, they groan for riches, they desire riches, and that's the direction they head into. They do things to be rich. It doesn't matter what it takes. It doesn't matter how it happens. I'm going to be rich. I'm going to have this money. I'm going to have the house. I'm going to have these fancy cars. My life is going to be the way I want it to be. I'm going to be rich. That is their groaning. And see, and they groan inside. If it doesn't happen, they have, it just, they, they have this, this deep, deep desire. And that's the direction that they head in. 
And when it doesn't happen, you can see the results because they, they have this deep despair. Now notice what he says about in the same text, he talks about this hope. He talks about the hope that is not seen. You see in verse 24, he said, for we were saved, listen, for we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what is what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Now, see, this is a hope that is not seen. We reason why we hope for it because it's not here yet. We desire it. You see, the groaning desire is because we hope for something. But we hope for it because we don't see it. It's not, it's not here, but we know it's there. We want it so bad. We know we can reach it. And so we groan for it. We desire for it. But the difference between the hope in the Bible and the hope that we have now, it, and listen, the hope in the Bible is something that we can achieve. The hope, and when I hope to be rich, when I hope to have this, when I hope to have that, these things probably can happen. It may not happen. When I hope for a better job, when I hope for a better lifestyle, it may happen. But it doesn't mean it's going to happen. It can happen. But the thing about this hope, is going to happen. He said in verse 25, but if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance because we know it's going to happen. We know it can happen. We know it's true. We believe it. We can hang in there. We can be steadfast. We can persevere. We can endure. Why? Because we're shooting for a hope that's, that really can happen. Something else may not happen. Other things may not happen. There are things that I have hoped for in my life that I thought would happen that just didn't happen. And so you go on with life. But this is something that can happen. You see how he's putting it all together? There's a hope. There's a hope that I have. There's a groaning that I have within. There's a strong desire that I have within because of this great hope that I want. And I know that this hope is in, is in existence. It's going to happen. Therefore, I can persevere. And then in verse 18, he says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. What is that? That's the hope. I don't know how the resurrection is going to happen. I don't understand it. I don't know how God can take a, a body and, and, and resurrect the body. He can, somebody can die and then they can resurrect and, and, and ascend and be in heaven for eternity. I don't understand that. I can't comprehend that. If you try to, scientists can't, you know, when you, when you, when scientists do their research, they can go but so far and then they get stuck. Have you ever studied the evolutionists? They can go but so far and then they get stuck. Why do they get stuck? Because the point is that God does exist. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know how at the end of time that, that we're going to resurrect and, and meet Christ in the air. I don't understand that. People think it's fiction. They think it's a fairy tale because they can understand that. That's not for me to understand. That's for me to believe. When Jesus did what he did, he proved that God has the power to resurrect. When he did what he did, he came here, he sacrificed himself, he died, and he resurrected from the grave. He stayed here for the days, then he ascended with the Father on high. Well, he has proven that. And you notice in the Bible teaches when he resurrected, when he died, many souls came out of the grave and walked around and talked and etc. Uh, uh, why? Because he has proven that there is a resurrection. Man does not have to die and live, die and, and be separated from God for eternity. Man, we can, we can die and resurrect and be with Jesus Christ forever. Meet him in the air, in the clouds. I mean, that's beautiful, but how is that? I don't know. But it's a hope. Understand that. It's a hope that we can achieve. Just because I don't understand the ins and outs of it, it doesn't mean it's going to happen. I don't know how God created the world. I mean, sometimes I watch Discovery Channel, the Animal Channel. Uh, sometimes you watch about the the insects and how they do things, how they move, and I wonder how in the world do they how in the world do they do that? I mean, you see little bugs that the the things they do and the, how they catch other bugs, and you think, how in the world do they do that? Animals, you, how in the world? And, and right there, I know there is a God. You see, that as far as it goes. And so, what he wants to see, there's a hope. That we can achieve. If we persevere, if we endure, if we do the things that are necessary to achieve those things. 
It's common sense. If you want to achieve something and you don't, and you don't do the things that you uh, have to do to achieve that, it's not going to happen. That's common sense. If you want to go to college, you want to get a degree and you don't, you don't study in high school, you don't do the things that you're supposed to do before you get there, you're not going to go. If you go, it's going to be extremely hard. You see, if you want to, if you want to go to trade school or you want to do this and that, if you don't do those things that you have to do to make it there, it's not going to happen. But you first have that desire. You have to have a strong desire to say, this is what I want to do. This is practical. See, the reason why most people don't, I guess let's say they don't achieve some things because some people don't have a desire to do anything. That's a difference. You see, when you have, when you first have that desire to do something with your life, to go somewhere, so you first have to say, this is what I want. This is the direction that I want to go in. And that's what we try to do with young people. We try to steer them in, the, in that direction. What do you want to do in life? Where do you want to go? What's your purpose? You see, and once they realize this is what I desire to do and I can do this, it leads them on a path. They go in a certain direction and they keep going that way. They keep going that way until they reach what they want to reach. It's common sense. It's practical. What do we groan for? What do we eagerly wait for? What's our desire? You see, a way to comprehend, to understand your desire is to understand the direction that you're going in today. If you're going in the direction that's not for the church of our Lord, if you're doing things that is not for the church of our Lord, then where's your desire? You see, if I let someone just take me to the left or take me to the right uh, because of fleshly desires or because of, of things that I, I want to do and, and because of this and because of that... Is my desire, is my groaning really for the Lord? Understand what I'm saying here. Understand what he's presenting here. This was a strong desire, the earnest expectation. It's like you're, you're, you're just watching for it with a, you ever want something and you can't, you ever, you, you know, it's like you, somebody, when you're a kid, you, you, you know that you're getting this present and it's coming or, or, in, and you're watching for it or you're looking for it or and you just, you just, you just can't wait to get it. That's the attitude. These, they were looking and watching for this thing. They couldn't wait. Uh, to get to what they felt like they, they should have, what they desired. I mean, do we feel that way? Really, do we feel that way? He says, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be. Do we, I mean, are we seeking first the kingdom of God? That's what they were doing. And that's why the sufferings that they were dealing with, he said, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Verse 19, for the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Now, who's doing that? That is the church. <laughs> for verse 24, the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Now, understand something. When you are involved or you are a member of the Lord's church, the body of Christ, there are things that we have to do. There are things that God commands us to do. And because of those things, persecution comes in existence. That's life. That's how it happens. But that's okay because that's why he says, he says, for the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly. The creation is a church. Not willingly, but because of him who subjected in hope. And so the reason why the church goes through turmoil and persecution is because God subjected in hope. Because of salvation. Because God said, this is what I, I desire you to do. I want you to do this. You're my church. And, and, and you must go out and proclaim the truth. And because you do that, people are not going to desire that truth. And there's persecution involved in that. But because I have a groaning within, I desire to go to heaven. It doesn't matter to me. You see, because I have a strong desire or groaning, that's going to influence me to go out and try to teach somebody. It's going to influence me to go out and try to say, okay, this is how I have to live. This is how you must live. It's going to influence me to try to go out and say, you must repent. Get your life together. You don't want to lose your soul. I want to see you in heaven. It's going to, it's going to force me to do that because why? I have a deep down desire. I have this deep groaning within that I want to do these things because I love the Lord. It's going to, it's going to, it's just a, it's a force that it's going to force you to do that. It's going to influence you to do that. 
That's what they had. And that's why they could face all this turmoil. Do you realize what they had to do? Read Timothy, the life of Timothy, the things that he was commanded to do. Timothy and Titus had a tough job. And they all did, but I'm, I'm, I'm just pulling them out. They were not commanded to just sit. They were commanded to work. They were commanded to set things in order. Paul had an extremely difficult job. Can you imagine, Dylan, can you imagine everywhere he went, he had to go tell the truth? That was his job. When he went to Corinth, why did he go to Corinth? He went to tell the truth. When he went to Galatia, why did he go to Galatia? He had to go proclaim the truth. When he went to Thessalonica, why did he go to Thessalonica? He had to go proclaim the truth. He sent Titus to Crete to proclaim the truth, to set things in order. He sent Timothy to Ephesus to set things in order. Why? To deal, to, to stand up and deal with the truth. Set the congregations in order. Set the church in order. He was in prison. The prison epistle, what is he doing? He's, he's proclaiming the truth. Everywhere he went, he had to proclaim the truth. And everywhere he went, he had to fight. Jude, that's why Jude says, contend for the faith. It's a, material, it's a military term. Stand up for the faith. Stand up for the gospel. It's a fight. Why is it a fight? Because it's a battle. The battle is the battles between God and Satan. And here's my point. God desires all to be saved through the gospel. And Satan desires that all people Stay away from the gospel. And the Bible uses military terminology because we're soldiers, because God desires the souls of mankind and his church. Church, as we know, in the Greek is ecclesia. Church are those who are called out to serve God's sole purpose. That's church. Ecclesia called out. Why? Because when he said go, into the, go out and teach all nations, that's a lot of work. Why? When you say I'm a member of the Lord's church, you're saying that I dedicate my life to you, God. My life is no longer, I don't want to do those things anymore. I want to serve you. And, and, and he'll allow you to serve him. But there's work to be done. There's work to be done. There's people to be saved. God desires those people. He desires those souls. He wants them. And he expects us to do, do the things scripturally to get those souls. It doesn't always work. But if I attempt to do those things and God knows that, I'm doing the work of the Lord. The apostles weren't successful in every case. That's why they're persecuted. There were some people who were stiff-necked. They, they, they were they were hard-hearted, and, and they just couldn't get it. They just didn't accept the word of God. But their job was to proclaim it. My job and your job is to proclaim it. My job is not to force you. My job is to proclaim it, to do what the Scriptures tells me to do and as far as I can go. And then at the end of time, God will say, job well done. Listen, people. When you are a member of the church, it's not going to be a piece of pie, a piece of cake. It's not going to be all sweet and happy birthday. You're dealing with the truth. You're dealing with the truth with your family members. You're dealing with the truth with your friends, congregations, this entire world. That is not easy. You determine who you are how you handle dealing with the truth. Learn how to face persecution now, and it'll help you during other times. Walk away from persecution now, you walk away again. You, you, it, it'll, it, it, you don't grow that way. You don't grow that way. This is it. This is it. People who have been involved in the ministry, people who have been involved in the church, they can tell you stories. A lot of you all have your stories. I can tell you stories. Times when I was afraid, when I had to make a stand, I felt like I was all by myself. It was just me and prayer that I had to go in the midst of turmoil. And, and everything that I've gone through, it does not even compare with the apostles. I don't know how in the world they were able to do what they did. In Corinthians, Paul was in Corinth. He was shaking and trembling. He says, I come to you shaking. He was afraid to go to Corinth. He was afraid. See, a lot of times we don't experience that because we really haven't tackled it. We really haven't got into what... God wants us to do. 
See, persecution comes. And I'm going to tell you something. What I've learned in life that some of the toughest people to deal with is my family. <laughs> I have a hard time teaching my family the truth. I have a difficult time. And I just get to the point where I just show them love and do say what I have to say scripturally and as far as I can go. Because, you know, family members, you have a tendency to keep trying and keep trying and keep trying and keep trying because you want you want them to be saved. That's how that's the attitude which you have a lot of people with all people. But it, it's, that's that's a persecution. That's a persecution. That's a persecution. Friends who, who it's all, you know, because you, you, you wanted them to do right and they don't do and it hurts you that they don't do right. But that's Christianity. It's not easy, people. But God is going to be there for us. God is going to watch over us. He's going to protect us. He's going to help us. But this is what the church is all about. But remember what we, what the Bible teaches. We have to have a strong, listen to me. Read Romans 8 again. That strong, that groaning within, that heavy desire that I want to be saved and I want others to be saved. That's what we have to have. That's it. You don't have that. We can get that. Do those things necessary to get that. Study God's word. Be involved with the congregation. Start doing things and learn how to teach. Start young like the teenagers. Start young. Get involved now. So you go through things when you get a certain age. You become great leaders and, and, and do things for the Lord's church. Start now. But you got to have that desire. I don't know if you, everybody here might have that desire within. I don't know. But you know. I know what my desire is. I know the things that I have to work on to be strong. And I really thank God for the things that I've gone through because it helped my desire. It made me stronger. Don't go to sleep. I'm about to close. But it made me stronger. You see, you know, the Bible says. Count it all joy when you fall into this and diverse temptations. That doesn't make. What do you mean? What does it mean? Count it all joy. Keep reading. Because you're growing. You're developing. In life. So you count on all joy. You're learning. It's, it's, it's getting you closer to God. I hope I've said something this evening to encourage you. To help you. Uh, to help you to, to want and desire heaven. It's, it's coming. I don't know when. It's coming. I don't know when Christ is coming back. We don't know when he's coming back, but he's coming. And develop that desire now. Don't wait until we're at the judgment day and, and then all of a sudden we see all it, all everything that's presented to us. Now we have the desire to go because we see it. That's a scary feeling. You're there now. We're at the judgment day. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Now we have this groaning inside, this desire to be with Jesus Christ. And he says, no, because the time is to do it right now. Young people, you're going to be faced with all these different desires and groanings. It's time to just bounce it away from you and stay involved in the church. Life, trust me, and these, these older people who've been through it, it's not even worth it. It's not worth it. The best thing to do, and I wish, I wish when I was young, like some of you, I wish that my daddy was in the church or my mama was in the church. Now, we thought we were Christians, but I wish that, you know, because I, there are things that I could have known about Christianity early. There were decisions I could have made early. And I know a lot of a lot of our young people don't see it now. They think, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. It does. But I, 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 because we learn a lot of things in life through experience, through going up and down, and it hurts. You see? But start now. Forget those. Have, the, have your desire now. Desire to be a preacher. Desire to be a strong Christian, the desire to have a family, a, a strong Christian wife, a strong Christian husband. Have those desires. You know, desire to put the kingdom first in your life right now. And I'm telling you, you, you you'll stay away from things that, that it just doesn't matter. It just you'll say it just doesn't matter. But when you're young, going through all these things and everything's out there, if you don't have the desire to go to heaven, you may make bad. You're going to make bad decisions and it may cost you. And I'll say this. And, I, you know, I'm I, you know, I'm practical. But. I, when I grew up in the city, the difference between me and some other teenagers, when I, when I walked out the door in New Jersey, right across the water from New York, there was everything right there, everything. But this is what kept me going. Listen, young people. 
I had a desire to go to the NBA. That was my, that was my whole goal. I thought I could just go to the NBA. Well, I thought I can go. I want to go play basketball in college, put that way. And what it was, because, listen, because I, I want you to get my point. I kept seeing college basketball, college basketball. I kept seeing championships. And every day I walked out that door, when guys were drinking and smoking and joyriding and everything, I would go right to that basketball court. I would go right to that gym. I would go to the field and run five miles a day. I would do push-ups every day. And, and I would do that. And then when, then when we started winning championships, and then when I went to college, I had another strong desire. And, but here's, you see what I'm saying? And, and, and so th- what happened? That desire to, to, to win these things kept me away from other things. And that's the point, young people. If you desire, but I wish today I would have had a desire at that age to go to heaven because, see, that's the same desire that I had to, to, to win these championships, to, to do this and do that, kept me away from things. But now what if I was 18 or 17, 16 and had a desire to go to heaven? There were things that I could have known in the scriptures that I had to learn early or learn late. You see, that's the desire I'm talking about. And did I, did I make it to the NBA? No, it didn't happen. <laughs> Did I go to college? Yeah, I did go to college. I finished, yeah. But all those things that I thought I was going to have, was, am I coaching basketball at this major university? No, it didn't happen. You see, but there's one thing I've learned late in life. When this becomes your desire, there are a lot of things I've tried that just didn't work. When this becomes your desire, listen. When this becomes your, y'all listening? When this becomes your desire, right, you realize this really can happen. And then when somebody has so much and you feel like that, it's not, it doesn't matter because this really can happen. And the riches that I'm going for is a riches, is riches that no one can take away from me. This is a hope that really can happen. And that's what you have to focus on. When you focus on that, you're going to go do bumps and bruises, but that's okay. But you're going to grow. Where's your groaning? Where's your desire? If you need to repent right tonight, please do so. Start tonight. If you sin publicly, make a public confession. But don't fight it. Just change. Just say, I want to des- I desire to serve Christ, and I want to start this evening. I want to start tonight. That is my goal. And at the end, you'll be so thankful. Because when Christ says, job well done, my faithful servant, that's going to be a beautiful statement. You don't want him to say, depart from me, you who work iniquity. No, that's, you don't want that. So repent tonight if you have to. If you're not a Christian, you don't have a chance to become a Christian. You can become a Christian tonight. We can teach you what it means to be added to the Lord's church, be baptized for the remission of sins. We can teach you that. But you have to make yourself known if that's your desire. I understand it's in the song of invitation.